welcome back to our channel. So in this video, we will discuss the two types of finance lease on the point of view or on the part of the lessor. So here, on the part of the lessor, see to it that we have two types of finance lease. We have what we call the direct finance lease. Okay? So direct finance lease. And then the second one is what we call the sales type lease. Sales type lease. Alright, so let's distinguish no, these two types of finance leases. So first, we'll go sa direct finance lease. Under direct finance lease, or under direct finance lease, see to it that the lessor is actually engaged in what? Is actually engaged in the financing business. Sir, anong ibig mo sabihin dyan? Well, ang ibig ko lang naman sabihin dito is hindi talaga tayo dito nagbebenta ng kahit na ano, no? Ibig sabihin, banko po tayo or financial institution wherein we will buy what? We will buy merchandise or we will help our customer to buy a certain car or certain house or a certain property then apparently tayo ang magpa-finance nun. Nagigets mo ba? So walang pera, right? Yung customer natin, papautangin natin siya para magkaroon siya ng bahay. So ang gagawin natin, bibili natin yung bahay and then ipapaupa natin sa kanya. Are we good? Alright, so this is actually an arrangement between a financing entity and a lessee. And then apparently, yung income, no, once again here, the income of the lessor will only be what? Will only be the interest income na syempre kikitain natin over the lease term. Dito, wala po tayong kita dun sa property kasi kung magkano yung binili natin kotse, yun din yung value na ipapalis natin kay lessor eh. Okay? Lessee rather. Okay? So here, wala pong dealer profit or walang gross profit no, na nire-recognize because the fair value and the cost of the asset are just equal. Kasi kung magkano mo binili, yun na rin yung fair value nyo, kakabili lang eh. On the other hand, kapag sinabi naman nating sales type lease, here, uh, the lessor is actually what? The lessor is actually a manufacturer, manufacturer or dealer of properties. Ibig sabihin, tayo si Toyota, kung kotse man to, tayo si Honda, tayo si Mitsubishi. Alright? Wherein, tayo talaga yung dealer ng kotse na yon. And, ginagamit natin yung lease para what? Para makabenta tayo. So, apparently now, dito sa sales type lease, dalawa ang income ni lessor. Sir, ano yung dalawang income niya? Una, is yung tinatawag natin na gross profit. And, alam naman natin, no, kung paano i-compute yan. Gross profit will just be equal to sales minus the cost of goods sold. Pero yung pangalawang income niya, syempre utang pa rin yan. So, mag-earn pa rin po tayo ng interest income. Okay? So, kapag direct finance lease, isa lang ang income natin na interest income. Pero kapag sales type lease, dalawa, gross profit and interest income. So, ano ba? By the way, interest income no is also known as the financing income. Okay? So, kapag tinanong ka how much is the total financing income to be recognized by the lessor, interest income lang po yun. Yung total interest income. Pero kapag sinabi, no, how much will be the total income to be recognized by the lessor and then sales type list tayo, dalawa, una is yung gross profit, pangalawa is yung interest income. Pero kapag financing income, interest lang ang isasama mo. Ha? Okay? So, ngayon, i-distinguish pa natin further etong dalawang to. Right, so dito meron akong Soria notes no on finance lease pagdating kay lessor. Malawanag ba? Okay? Start tayo sa an? Start tayo sa computation natin ng gross investment. So dito meron po tayong tinatawag na gross investment. So sir, paano po 'yan kino-compute under the direct finance lease then under the sales type lease? Okay? So under the direct finance lease, gross investment no will only be equal to gross rentals. Sir, kapag sinabi natin gross rentals, ano yan? Well, this is just equal no, to the annual rental. Again, this is just equal to the annual rental times the lease term. Okay, yan lang yon. Then, what? And then, i-add po natin dyan yung alin? I-add natin dyan yung residual value. Pero, itong residual value na to, lagyan natin ng asterisk. Okay? Because meron akong i-discuss dyan na additional concept. Okay? So, kapag in mo yung dalawang yan, see to it na ito na po yung tinatawag natin na gross rentals. Okay? 
Then under the sales type list, same thing, no? Gross investment will just be equal to the gross rentals plus the residual value. So, pareho lang sila, no? Okay? Pareho lang din na yung residual value may asterisk kasi may special concept akong i-discuss dyan na kailangan natin matandaan. Alamanag ba? So, pag-usapan natin yung asterisk na yan, yung residual value na yan. So, see to it, no? Na this residual value, once again, this residual value will be added whether what? Whether guaranteed or unguaranteed. Again, whether guaranteed or unguaranteed. Because once again, no? Meron tayong dalawang klase ng residual value. Guaranteed or unguaranteed. Depende yun kung ginagaranty ba ni Lessie yung value ng property na yan at the end of the list term. Because once again, no? Meron tayong TOMS na discuss ko to sa part, part 1. Right? Kapag TNO, yan, yun yung transfer of ownership at saka option, si to it na walang balikan. So, kapag walang balikan, no need to guarantee any residual value. But if the property, no, will be reverted back to the lessor, ibig sabihin M and S ang ginamit natin. Kasi, material lease term or substantial lease payment, si to it na, ibabalik kasi yung asset kay lessor. And if that's the case, sometimes the lessee must a guarantee any residual value para, alright, hindi matakot si lessor. Kasi, kung walang guaranteed residual value, eh, pwedeng sirain ni Lacey yung property, pwedeng hindi niya yun alagaan. Nagigets mo ba? Okay? So, whether guaranteed or unguaranteed, see to it na, ina-add po natin yan. Okay? Then, ano pang kasama dito? See to it, no? Na residual value, again, this residual value is only considered, again, is only con Considered, if what? If there is no, no? If there is no transfer of ownership. Again, if there is no transfer of ownership. Right? And bargain. Purchase option. Purchase option. Ibig sabihin, kapag, no? Once again, ulitin ko lang yung sinabi ko kanina. Kapag T or O, ang ginamit natin, sir, ano yung T or O? Nood ka ng part 1, doon mo malalaman, no? Si to it na, hindi po residual value. Sige, timo na. Kapag ti ang ating ginamit, si to it na, wala po tayo diyang ina-add. So, nothing is added to the gross rentals. Okay? Kapag O naman, ang ina-add natin sa gross rentals instead of the residual value will be the option price. Okay? So, option price ang ating i-add, ah. Then lastly, kapag M or S naman, nagpo-fall ang finance list na to, si to it na what? Si to it na, dun pa lang natin i-add yung residual value, whether guaranteed or unguaranteed. So, yung naka-add dyan, nakadepende ba pa kung TO or MS tayo. Maliwanag ba? So, para malaman mo ulit yung TO MS, nood ka doon sa uh, part 1 ng ating video. Kahit yung uh, starting point lang or yung first part lang, no? So now, pag-usapan din natin yung gross rentals since nandito na rin lang tayo, eh, pag-usapan na rin natin yan. Because gross rentals sometimes, no? Sometimes, this is not what? This is not given in the problem. So, paano mo yun i-co-compute if that's the case? Well, if that's the case na hindi yan given, no? The computation will be the cost of the asset. Again, this will be equal to the cost of the asset. Then, ibabawas natin dyan yung alin? Ibabawas po natin dyan yung present value of residual value, no? Again, this will, we will deduct, no? The present value of the residual value para malaman natin yung what? Para maraman po natin yung present value of rentals. Luanag? Then, i-divide natin yan saan? I-divide natin yan sa present value factor na ating gagamitin whether ordinary annuity or annuity due. Ordinary annuity ang gagamitin, syempre, if what? Ordinary annuity ang gagamitin if your first payment is after one period pa. But if the first payment will be on day one, ang gagamitin po natin will be annuity due. So, divide mo lang yun yung present value factor and then that's it, no? This will already be what? This will already be the annual rental. Okay? So, this will be the annual rentals that will be receivable every year. Are we now good? Now, punta po tayo dun sa tinatawag natin na net investment. So, kung meron tayong gross investment, meron din tayo, syempre, na net investment. Okay na tayo sa gross investment, ha? 
So here on net investment, magkaiba ang computation. So gross investment, same lang, no? Again, sa gross invest investment, same lang ang computation. Pero dito sa net investment, lagi mo tatandaan na hindi na po pareho. So kailangan mo nang malaman kung dealer ba tayo or hindi. Kung direct finance list ba tayo or hindi. Nagkakaintindihan ba? So under the direct finance list, net investment will be equal to the cost of the asset. Again, this will be equal to the cost of the asset. Then may i-add tayo dyan eh. Sir, ano yung i-add po natin yan? I-add po natin dyan yung initial direct cost. Again, initial direct cost paid. Again, paid by the lessor. Lagi mo tatandaan na paid by the lessor dapat. Sir, paano pag paid by the lessee? Pag paid by the lessee, walang paki dyan si lessor. Okay? So, kapag in mo yung cost of the asset tsaka yung initial direct cost paid by the lessor, eto na yung tinatawag po natin na net investment under the direct finance list. Very good. But under the sales type list, this will be different. Sir, bakit? Because net investment will be the present value of gross investment. Meaning, net investment will be equal to the present value of rentals plus what? Plus the present value of residual value or option kung ano man yung in mo sa gross investment. No? So, this will be the net investment under what? Under the uh, sales type list. So, magkaiba na ang computation ng dalawa. Okay? So, now, punta tayo sa next page. No? Add lang ako ng page. So, lalagay ko ulit dito. Direct finance list. And then, dito meron tayong tinatawag na sales type list. Okay? So, after the gross investment and the net investment, the next thing na kailangan mong malaman is about unearned interest income. Again, meron tayong tinatawag na unearned interest income. Sir, ano yung unearned interest income na yan? Unearned interest income is the total, no? Total financing income. Total financing income that will be recognized over the list term. Ano ba? But not necessarily, no? Na on year 1, i-recognize mo na yun ang buo. Si to it na over the list term po yan, i-recognize. So sir, paano yan i-compute? Madali lang, as long as tama yung gross investment mo at yung net investment mo. Because si to it, no, na gross investment minus the net investment will already be our unearned interest income. Same thing under the sales type list, no? Gross investment minus net investment lang tayo dito and then that's it this will already be the unearned interest income maliwanag ba yun? okay so sir pareho lang ba yung unearned interest income under the two type of lease? hindi po pareho sir bakit hindi pareho? because once again magkaiba sila ng net investment maliwanag ba? so before natin yan iwan no lagyan ko ng asterisk etong net investment na to sir bakit? explain ko lang siya alright because meron kang kailangan matandaan eh dito sa Ah, uh, ano tawag dito? Net investment na to. Sir, ano 'yon? Well, according no, according to paragraph number 67 of IFRS number 16, lessors again lessors shall recognize asset no, shall recognize assets or yung tinatawag natin na lease receivable. Again, ito yung tinatawag natin no, na lease receivable so lessor shall recognize assets or lease receivable under finance lease equal to what equal to the net investment again equal to the net investment in the lease ibig sabihin kung magkano yung net investment no na na-compute mo under direct finance lease that's the initial measurement of what of the lease receivable. Same thing with the sales type lease. Yun yung initial measurement natin ng lease receivable. And see to it, no? That this net investment or lease receivable will be amortized. Again, this will be amortized using what? Using the effective interest method. So, ibig sabihin, mag amortize pa rin po tayo dito. So, kay, wag na wag mong kakalimutan, no? Yung effective interest method. Na yan, kasi gagamitin mo yan sa marami pang topics. Okay? So, ibig sabihin, kung effective interest method tayo, paano natin i-compute ngayon yung interest income? Interest income will be equal no, to the carrying amount at the beginning times right the rate na ginagamit natin. Nagkakaintindihan ba? Pero ganito, no, balik ako sa last page. Sir, bakit ka bumalik? 
Because gustong sabihin sa inyo kung anong gagamitin dito sa computation natin ng present value. As you can see here, oh, kailangan natin ng present value factor. No? So in computing the present value factor, situate na, kailangan po natin gumamit ng interest rate. No? So sir, anong ginagamit natin interest rate? The interest rate will be used, will be based on the following in the order of priority. Right? So you cannot use number 2 unless number 1 is not available. No? So what's number 1? Ano yung priority natin? Priority natin will be the implicit rate in the list. Okay? Sir, paano kapag walang implicit rate? If hindi available si implicit rate, gagamitin mo yung pangalawa. Ano yung pangalawa, sir? Second will be the incremental, no? Incremental borrowing rate of the lessee. Ano ba? So number 1 will be the implicit rate in the list. The number 2 will be the incremental borrowing rate. Pag parehong given implicit rate kasi naka-priority nga yan. Luanag ba? Okay? So, okay na tayo sa unearned interest income. Now, punta tayo sa next item. Next item is yung tinatawag po natin na sales. Sir, akala ko ba under direct finance list hindi tayo dealer? Yes, tama ka doon. That's why sales under direct finance list is just equal to zero. Right? Walang ganyan. Luanag ba? But under, no? Under the sales type list, sales will be equal to what? This will be equal to the net investment. Again, this will be equal no? to the net investment or fair value. Again, or fair value no? of the asset, whichever is what? Whichever is, whichever is lower. Okay? So, yung sales account, pang sales type list lang. So, kapag tinanong ka how much is the sales under direct finance list, your answer will be equal to zero. Okay? Next, punta tayo sa cost of goods sold. Pagdating naman sa cost of goods sold, syempre, zero pa rin tayo under direct finance list kasi hindi naman tayo dyan nagbebenta. But under the say, ad, sales type list, uh, cost of goods sold, no? Will be equal to what? This will be equal to the cost of the asset. Again, this will be equal, no? So, the cost of the asset plus what? Plus the initial direct cost. Again, plus the initial direct cost paid by the lessor. So, kapag in mo yung dalawang yan, yan na po, yan tinatawag natin na cost of goods sold. Wala na ba? So, may napansin ka ba? Yes, sir, may napansin ako. Anong napansin mo? Yung computation ng cost of goods sold dito sa sales type, please, same yan sa computation ng what? Same yan sa computation ng net investment under the direct finance list. Luwanag ba? So, magkaiba ngayon ang treatment natin ng initial direct cost. Under, once again, under the direct finance list, initial direct cost is what? Initial direct cost is capitalized as part of the list receivable because net investment is the initial measurement of the list receivable, no? So, initial direct cost under direct finance list is part of the initial measurement of the list receivable and amortized over the list term. Okay? But under the sales type lease, initial direct cost is expense outright because this is part of the total cost of goods sold. So, ini-expense outright natin yan. And, if hahayaan mo kung i-review ka, no, under operating lease sa part 1 natin, isn't it, initial direct costs are what? Are added to the carrying amount of the asset and amortized over the lease term ulit. Anag? So, magkakaiba ang treatment no, ng initial direct cost. Depende kung operating list ka ba, direct finance list, or sales type list. Okay? So, lagi mo yung tatandaan. Ha? Then, last item will be what? Will be the gross profit. Again, last item no will be the gross profit. Under the direct finance list, gross profit will be equal to zero kasi wala ka namang sales at cost of goods sold. Eh. But under the sales type list, once again, under... The sales type list, this will be different because meron tayong sales and cost of goods sold. So, normal computation na lang to. Gross profit will be equal no to sales minus cost of goods sold. Okay? So, that's what? That's the gross profit computation under the sales type list. And let me add a page. One last thing, no? One last thing will be cost of goods sold. Linawin ko lang to. Okay? So, sabi ko kanina, no? Cost of goods sold will be equal to what? This will be equal to the cost of the asset. Again, this will be equal to the cost of the asset. Right? My uh, Plus what? Plus the initial direct cost. Again, plus the initial direct cost paid by the 
lesser. Diba na ba? So, this computation, no, of cost of goods sold. Once again, this computation of cost of goods sold will only be valid if what? Will only be valid if we are actually, or if, and only if, the residual value given is what? Is actually guaranteed. Again, if the residual value given is guaranteed, this will be the computation. Pero what if, sir, no? What if the residual value given in the problem is actually unguaranteed? Once again, what if this is unguaranteed? Guaranteed. So, if the residual value is unguaranteed, computation of cost of goods sold will be different. So, sir, paano na i-compute yan? This will now be equal no, to the cost of the asset. Again, this will be equal to the cost of the asset pa din. Plus the initial, no? Again, plus the initial direct cost paid by the lessor. But this time, meron po tayong binabawas. Sir, ano yung binabawas natin? Ibabawas po natin yan yung present value of unguaranteed residual value. Again, binabawas po dyan yung present value of unguaranteed residual value. So, this will now be the computation of cost of goods sold if the residual value given is actually unguaranteed. Nagkakaintindihan ba? Hopefully, okay tayo sa cost of goods sold, no? Now, la one last thing before tayo pumunta sa mga problems. Let's... Ah, uh, para bang clarify also the sales account. Okay? So, for the sales account, once again, for the sales account, anong sinabi ko? Well, sabi ko kanina, sales will be equal to the net investment plus what? I mean, or what? Or, fair value, whichever, no? Whichever is lower. But this computation, no? Of sales will only be valid once again if and only if the residual value is guaranteed. So, pang-guaranteed, residual value lang po yan, ha? Sir, what if the residual value is once again, no, unguaranteed? What if the residual value is unguaranteed? So, if the residual value is unguaranteed, the computation will be what? Will be equal to the net investment pa rin? Or, fair value, no? Whichever, again, whichever is lower, kaso meron tayong minaminus, less, ano yung minaminus natin? Less the present value of unguaranteed residual value. Okay? So, ang, ang present value ng unguaranteed residual value, binabawa siya saan? Binabawa siya sa cost of goods sold and sa sales if, right, unguaranteed nga yan. Pero kapag guaranteed, wala tayong problema. Again, kapag guaranteed, no? Wala tayong problema. Okay? Then, one last thing. Dito sa gross investment at sa net investment, see to it, no? na residual value is added whether guaranteed or unguaranteed. Itong guaranteed, unguaranteed na ito, magmamatter lang siya kapag sales at cost of goods sold ang ating pinag-uusapan. But since, same amount lang naman yung na i sa cost of goods sold at sales, see to it now, that gross profit, no, once again, the gross profit, itong gross profit na to will just be the same. Again, this will just be the same whether guaranteed or unguaranteed. Kasi, Pareho lang naman eh, yung amount na dinudak natin. Tama ba? Ibig sabihin, whether guaranteed or unguaranteed, yung gross profit dapat na compute mo under sales type list will just be the same. Okay? So now, let's apply these concepts no, to the problems. Starting with illustrative problem number 1. So here, in illustrative problem number 1, on January 1, 2022, Pepper Company leased a machinery to a Vanner Company with the following details. So, cost of the machinery is 1518650. Lease term is 4 years. Implicit interest rate before the initial direct cost is 12%, while the implicit interest rate after initial direct cost is 10%. So, sir, anong pinagkaiba niyan? Itong before initial direct cost na yun na 12%, ginagamit po ito sa computation ng what? Ginagamit yan sa computation ng annual rental. Pero itong 10% na to, yan yung ginagamit natin sa pag-amortize or sa amortization natin. And at the same time, kung yan yung ginagamit sa amortization, yan din po yung ginagamit sa computation ng interest income. Okay? And present value factors all are already given. Okay? So, on January 1, 2022, Pepper Company paid initial direct cost of 66300 So, number one, how much is the gross investment. Very good. So, dito, compute muna natin yung annual rental, no? Starting with the cost of the asset, no? So, how much will be the cost of the asset? 
cost of the asset once again is equal to 1518650. Okay? Ibabawas natin yan yung present value ng residual value or option. Meron ba? Wala naman eh. So, ang ibig sabihin, yan na rin yung present value of rentals. So, i-divide na ngayon natin yan sa present value factor natin. Okay? So, anong sabi ng problem? Well, here, dalawang present value factor ang given, no? A 12% and a 10%. Sabi ko nga, in the computation of annual rental, yung 12% yung ginagamit. Okay? So, ang gagamitin natin will be 3.0373. So, divided by 3.0373. Or, our annual rental here is magkano? Our annual rental will be equal to 1518650 divided by 3.0373, or this is equal to 500,000. Okay? So, yung annual rental na yan, i-multiply mo lang sa lease term, which is 4 years, see to it now na what? See to it now na, makukumpute na natin yung gross investment, kasi wala naman tayong residual value or option eh. So, gross investment will only be equal to the gross rentals, and this is equal to 2 million pesos. So, requirement number 1, 2 million pesos will be our final answer. Okay? So, ngayon, number 2 tayo. How much is the net investment? Meron bang sinabi na dealer tayo dito? May sinabi bang ganun? Wala. Tama ba? So, kung walang sinasabi na dealer tayo, we'll assume na direct finance list tayo. Okay? And under direct finance list, how do we compute for the net investment? That's equal, no? To the cost of the asset which is equal to 1518650 then minus what i mean plus what plus the initial direct cost paid by the lessor so magkano po yung ating net investment ngayon magkano muna yung initial direct cost paid by the lessor so according to the problem pepper company which is the lessor paid initial direct cost of 66300 so 1518650 plus 66300 the net investment now will be equal to 1,584,950. Okay? So, 1,584,950 will be our final answer for the second requirement. Okay? Then, third requirement, how much is the unearned interest income? Well, ang gagawin mo lang naman dito, no, is i-deduct sa gross investment which is equal to 2 million yung alin. Yung na-compute natin na net investment which is equal to 1584950 okay so the earned interest income now will be how much this will be equal to 415050 okay so requirement number 3 415050 will be our final answer nagkakaintindihan ba now number 4 tayo how much is the carrying amount of the lease receivable on December 31, 2022. Okay? So, once again, binigyan kita ng shortcut, no? Kung paano mag-compute ng carrying amount at the end. Ano yung shortcut na yun? Well, sabi ko sa'yo, carrying amount at the end is actually equal to carrying amount at the beginning times one point effective rate, which is the implicit rate, minus the payment. Again, minus po yung payment. Okay? So, compute natin ngayon yung carrying amount. Kailan? On January 1, 2022, given na yan, okay, compute din natin yung December 31, 2022, and then last will be December 31, 2023. Sabay na natin, okay? So, nung usapan kanina, sabi nga natin under IFR 16, paragraph 67, right? Less social recognized assets or yung least receivable under a finance list at an amount equal to the net investment. So, initial measurement of our lease receivable now will be the net investment of 1584950. Lawanag ba yun, guys? We're good on that. Now, shortcut tayo. So, 1584950 times, ano nga ginagamit sa amortization? Yung 10% na. So, times 1.1 minus the annual payment of 500,000. So, minus 500,000. D what they call this, carrying amount of lease receivable on December 31, 2022 will now be equal to 1243445. Okay? Then times 1.1 1 .1 minus 500,000 carrying amount on December 31, 2023 will be equal to 867,790. Okay? 
So, para mas maintindihan mo yung shortcut na yan, load ka doon sa video natin about bonds payable and sa video natin about present value factors and amortization. Okay? So, requirement number four, once again, anong tinatanong? Carrying amount of the least receivable on December 31, 2022. So, our final answer here will be equal to 1243445. So, lalagay ko dito 1243445. Okay? Now, punta tayo sa number 5. Anong meron dito? How much is the current portion of the least receivable on December 31, 2022? Then number 6, how much is the non-current portion? Okay? So, dito, ahatiin lang natin, no? Once again, ahatiin lang natin yung carrying amount as of December 31, 2022, which is magkano to? Which is equal to 1, 2, 4, 3, 4, 4, 5 into the current and non-current portion. Okay? So, lagi mo tatandaan, no? That the current portion is only the residual amount. Sir, what do you mean by that? Well, una natin compute dito yung non-current portion. Sir, paano mo na-compute yung non-current portion? Well, this is actually equal, no? to the carrying amount the following year and that's equal to 867790 sir paano mo naman yun nalaman well ganito kasi yan sa tama ba na kapag non trade liabilities pag beyond 1 year non current na tama ba so if at the end of 2023 meron ka pa ring receivable na 867 asahan mo na kailan mo na yan makokolekta makokolekta mo yan starting January 1 2024 na that's beyond 1 year already if December 31, 2022 tayo ngayon, ibig sabihin, yung 867-790, that will be the non-current portion. And apparently, the current portion will be how much? 1, 2, 4, 3. Again, 1, 2, 4, 3. Uh, 4, 4, 5. Minus 867 Or, this is equal to 375,655. So, final answer number 5 is equal to 375-655. The number 6, magkano daw yung non-current portion? Final answer is 867-790. Alright? So, that's illustrative problem number 1. Now, punta tayo dito sa illustrative problem number 2. So, here in illustrative problem number 2, on January 1, 2022, Pepper Company leased a machinery to Ivana Company with the following details. Okay? So, cost of the machinery is 376100 3, Residual value guarantee is 400000 Useful life and lease term is 4 years. Then, implicit rate is 10%. Given also, or the what? Are the present value factors. Okay? The annual rental is payable in advance. Kailan? On January 1 of each year, starting January 1, 2022. Ibig sabihin dito, kung payable in advance yung mga annual rentals natin, anong gagamitin? Annuity due po tayo, okay? So, annuity due, hindi natin gagamitin dito yung ordinary annuity natin, okay? Because yung ordinary annuity, ginagamit lang yun kapag yung first payment is after one period. So, requirement number one, how much is the annual rental, okay? Add lang ako ng page, no? So, paano nga ulit yung compute That will be equal to the cost of the asset. Again, cost of the asset, which is equal to magkano? 3,760,100. Okay? Then, i-deduct natin dito yung present value of residual value. So, magkano ba yung present value ng residual value natin? Well, residual value is 400,000. Then, one time lang yan. Marireceive uh, at the end. So, present value of 1 tayo. 0 0.6800 So, 400,000 times 0 0.6830 This will give us 273,200 Okay? So, magkano ngayon yung present value natin ng rentals? Present value of rentals will be equal to 3,760,100 minus 273,200 or this is equal to 3,486,900 Okay? I-divide natin yan sa present value factors once once again. Or din, I mean, annuity due tayo kasi payable in advance. So, 3.4869 ang ating gagamitin. 3.4869. So, apparently now, the annual rental will be how much? Annual rentals will now be equal to 3.4869,900 divided by 3.4869 or this is equal to 1 million pesos. 
So requirement number one, 1 million pesos will be our final answer. Okay? Now, punta tayo dito sa number 2. Number 2, how much is the gross investment? Paano nga ulit yan? Well, gross investment will just be equal no, to the gross rentals plus the residual value. Okay? So, ito na yung tinatawag natin na gross investment. So, magkano bang gross rentals? This will be equal to 1 million pesos times the lease term. Ang lease term natin is 4 years, no? So, times 4. So, this will be equal to 4 million pesos. Plus the residual value, no? Of 400,000. So, our gross investment now will be equal to 4.4 4 million. So, requirement number 2, 4.4 4 million will now be our final answer. Okay? Requirement 3, magkano daw yung net investment? So, net investment no, will just be equal to the cost of the asset plus, magkano mo na yan? That's 376100 plus the initial direct cost. Eh, wala namang given na initial direct cost, di ba? So, ibig sabihin, yan na agad-agad yung net investment natin. So, net investment will be 376100 So, lalagay ko dito, no? 376100 Then, one last thing, how much is the unearned interest income? Well, Ipag-deduct mo lang yung gross investment at yung net investment. So, 4.4 million minus 3,760, 100. The unearned interest income now will be equal to 639,900. So, final answer requirement number 4 is equal to 639,900. Okay? Now, punta tayo dito sa illustrative problem number 3. Illustrative problem number 3. On January 2, 2022, Pepper Company leased the machinery to another entity with the following details. No? So, cost of the machinery is once again given. Residual value guarantee is given. Implicit rate, 5 years. I mean, useful lease term, 5 years. Implicit rate, 8%. No? The annual rental is payable in advance on January 1 of each year. Starting January 1, 2022. So, annuity due ulit ang gagamitin natin. Hindi natin gagamitin itong present value factor of ordinary annuity. No pang sabi dito? The lease provides for a transfer of title to the lessee at the end of the lease term. So, anong sinabi ko pagka ganun? Well, balikan lang natin yung discussion kanina. No? So, sabi natin dito, right, kapag letter T yung present sa problem, wala po tayong ina-add. Nothing is added dito, no? sa gross investment. Ina-add lang natin yung residual value kapag letter M or letter S tayo. Pero kapag letter T, nothing is added kapag letter O, option price yung ina-add. So dito, sabi ng problem, anong sabi niya? Sabi ng problem, there is a transfer of title. Ibig sabihin, this residual value guaranteed no, will only be ignored. Ini-ignore lang natin yan. Okay? So let number one ngayon, again, punta po tayo dito sa number one. Number one, magkano daw po yung annual rentals natin. Well, annual rentals will be equal to the cost of machinery, which is equal to magkano yan? That's equal to 3449,600 divided by agad sa present value factor, sir, bakit? Because once again, ini-ignore ang residual value guaranteed or guaranteed kapag may transfer of title. So, anag ba? So, annuity due tayo, 4.312. So, 4.312. See to it now that the annual rental, again, the annual rentals will be equal to 800,000. So, requirement number 1, 800,000 will be our final answer. Okay? Requirement number 2 tayo. Requirement number 2, how much is the gross investment? Well, since i-ignore nga natin kasi nothing is added, no? Yung residual value, see to it that gross investment will now be equal to 500, uh, 800,000, that's the annual rental, times the lease term, which is equal to 5 years. No? So, ang ibig sabihin dito, meron tayong 800,000 times 5, or our gross investment no, will be equal to 4 million pesos. So, requirement number 2, 4 million pesos will be our final answer. Now, punta tayo dito sa number 3. Number 3, how much is the net investment? So, net investment natin will be equal normally to the cost plus the initial direct cost. Kaso, wala namang given no, na initial direct cost. So, ibig sabihin, 
yung net investment ngayon natin will be the cost of 3449600. So requirement number 3, 3449600 will be the final answer. Very good. The number 4, how much is the unearning the rest income? Well, I did mo lang. Yung net investment from the gross investment, that's it, no? That's already the unearned interest income. So, 4 million minus 3, 4, 4, 9, 600. This will be equal to 550,400. So, final answer requirement number 4 is 550,400. Okay? So, that's illustrative problem number 3. Now, punta tayo sa illustrative problem number 4. So, here in illustrative problem number 4, Pepper Company is a dealer. Once again, Pepper Company is a dealer in machinery, meaning sales type lease po tayo dito. Again, sales type lease tayo dito. Okay? So, computation will now be different. Problem 1, 2, 3, direct finance lease. This time, sales type lease. Okay? So, on January 1, 2022, a machinery was leased to Ivana Company with the following provisions. Okay? So, annual rental payable at the end of each year is 800000 Useful life in lease term will be 5 years. Cost of machinery is 2 million. Residual value is 200,000. Initial direct cost paid by the lesser is 100,000. No? Then present value factors are given based on the implicit rate of 10%. Then at the end of the lease term, the machinery will revert to Pepper Company. So babalik yun kay Pepper Company. So MS tayo dito. Ibig sabihin, kung M at S tayo dito, Alright, we can add or we can consider the residual value. Okay? So, scenario A, residual value is guaranteed. Actually, saan lang yan magmamatter? Magmamatter lang yan sa 4, 5, 6. Sir, what do you mean by that? Because of 1, 2, and 3, see to it the whether residual value is guaranteed or unguaranteed, kinoconsider pa rin natin yun. Maluanag ba? Pero sa 4, 5, 6, kapag unguaranteed na yung residual value, syempre, Right, kailangan mo nang ididak yung present value nun. Okay? So, number one, magkano daw muna yung gross investment natin, no? So, number one, gross investment will be equal to the gross rentals, which is equal to magkano gross rentals? That's 800 times the lease term of 5 years. So, 800,000 times the lease term of 5 years, or this is equal to 4 million pesos. Okay? Now, add natin dyan yung residual value once again, whether Guaranteed or unguaranteed as long as hindi po letter T or letter O yung ating scenario. Okay? So, residual value will be equal to magkano yan? That's equal to 200,000. Okay? So, lalagay ko dito 200,000. And apparently, this is the gross investment already. So, magkano gross investment natin? Gross investment will be equal to 4.2 million. So, requirement number 1, 4.2 million will be our final answer. Okay? Requirement number 2, how much is the net investment? Kapag sales type lease, net investment will be different because kapag sales type lease, it will be the present value of rentals plus the present value of residual value. Kasi kanina, sa direct finance lease, net investment which is equal to uh, the cost plus initial direct cost. So, magkaiba sila ha? So, present value of rentals will be equal to 800,000 times yung present value factor of ordinary annuity. Sir, bakit ordinary annuity? Kasi payable at the end of each year. Okay? So, payable at the end of each year. So, ordinary annuity is equal to 3.7908. So, lalagi ko dito 3.7908. Then, residual value is 200,000 times the present value of 1 which is 0 0.6209. So, 0 0.6209. 9. So, 800,000 times 3.7908, this is equal to 3,032,640. And 200,000 times 0 0.6209, this is equal to 124,180. So, adding these two will already give us the net investment which is equal to magkano net investment natin. The net investment will be equal to 3,100,000. 56,820. So, 3156820 will be the final answer for the second requirement. Okay? 
Then requirement 3, magkano daw yung unearned interest income? Ang dali na yan. As long as tama yung gross at net investment mo, no? So, unearned interest income will be equal to 4.2 million minus 3156820 or this is equal to 1 million 43,180. So, lalagay ko dito, no? 1 million 43,180. Okay? Number 4, how much is the sales? Magkano daw yung sales? Paano tayo mag-compute ng sales? That is equal to the net investment or fair value whichever is lower. Wala naman given dito, no? Again, wala pong given dito na uh, fair value. Ibig sabihin, here, if number 3 ito, no? Here, in number 4, situate that sales will only be equal to the net investment kasi wala naman nga given na fair value, which is equal to 3156820. So, requirement number 4, 3156820 will be the final answer. Requirement 5, how much is the cost of goods sold? Well, cost of goods sold, sabi nga natin kanina, will be equal to the cost of the asset. Again, this will be equal to the cost of the asset plus what? Plus the initial direct cost paid by the lessor. So, kung maaalala mo, no, ito actually yung ating, what? Ito actually yung ating net investment under direct finance lease. Pero sa sales type lease, cost of goods sold siya. Okay? So, cost of the asset is equal to 2 million pesos plus the initial direct cost which is equal to what? Which is equal to 100,000 or our cost of goods sold is 2.1 million. So, final answer, requirement number 5 is equal to 2.1 million. Okay? Requirement number 6, how much is the gross profit? Well, madali lang to. Here in number 6, gross profit no, will just be equal to sales which is equal to 3156820 minus the cost of goods sold of 2.1 million or this is equal to 1,056,820. So requirement number 6, 1,056,820 will be the final answer. Okay? Then number 7, how much is the carrying amount of the lease receivable on December 31? Once again, no? Initial carrying amount or carrying amount at the beginning of the lease receivable will be equal to the net investment. That is in accordance with paragraph 67. Okay? So, 3156820 will be our initial measurement. So, shortcut to lit, no? So, carrying amount at the end will be equal to 3156820 carrying amount at the beginning times 1 point effective rate. That is 10%. So, times 1.1 then minus the payment of 8. 100,000. Okay? So, the carrying amount now at the end will be how much? 3156,820 times 1.1 minus 800,000 or this is equal to 2,672,502. So, 2672,502 will now be the final answer. Okay? So, that is scenario letter A wherein the residual value is actually guaranteed. Now, punta tayo sa scenario B. Residual value is unguaranteed. Once again, 1, 2, 3 will just be the same, no? So, number 1, gross investment will be equal to 4.2 million still. Number 2, net investment, final answer will still be equal to 3156820. Then, number 3, an earned interest income, final answer will still be equal to 1,043,180. Because whether guaranteed or unguaranteed, pareho lang. Magkakatulo lang sa sales at sa cost of goods sold. So, dito ngayon tayo sa number 4. Right? So, how to compute sales? Sales will be equal to the net investment or fair value, whichever is lower. Kaso, walang fair value. So, net investment nga tayo. So, 3156820. So, anag ba? Then, meron akong pinapa-minus yun eh. Anong pinapa-minus ko? That's the present value of the unguaranteed residual value. Magkano yung guaranteed residual value, yung present value niya? That's 1, 2, 4, 820. So, minus 1, 2, 4, 820. See to it now that sales will only be equal to magkano? 3, 1, 5, 6, 820. Minus 1, 2, 4, 820. Or, this is equal to 3, 000, 000. So, requirement number 4, 3, 000, 000 will be the final answer. Okay? Then, number 5. Number 5, how much will be the uh, cost of goods sold? 
well cost of goods sold will still be equal no to the cost of the asset which is equal to magkano yan that's equal to 2 million pesos plus the initial direct cost paid by the lessor which is equal to 100,000 then this time minus ulit yung present value of unguaranteed residual value which is 124,820 so the cost of goods sold now will be equal to how much? 2 million plus 100,000 minus 124,820 or this is equal to 1975,180 one so requirement number 5 Cost of goods sold, final answer is 1975-180. Okay? Number 6, magkano gross profit? Well, here in number 6, gross profit, sabi ko nga kanina, will just be the same, no? Whether guaranteed or unguaranteed. So, try natin. 3,032,000 minus 1975-180 is in it. Ang nakukumpute mo pa rin dito is 1,056,820 which is the same sa nakukumpute na gross profit kanina. So, ang magkakatalo lang dito is yung sales at cost of goods sold. All other things will just be the same. So, 1,056,820. Final answer, number 6. And number 7, how much is the carrying amount at the end of 2022? Since pareho lang naman yung net investment, pareho lang din yung sagot. Ibig sabihin, 2,672,502 will now be the final answer. So, that's... Scenario letter, bravo, wherein the residual value is unguaranteed. Okay? Now, punta naman tayo sa illustrative problem number 5. So, here, in illustrative problem number 5, Pepper Company is a dealer in equipment. Ulit. Okay? So, sales type lease. On January 1, 2022, an equipment is leased to Ivana Company with the following provisions. Annual rental at the end of each year is 500 Lease term 4 years, useful life 5 years, cost 1 million, purchase option is 200,000, initial direct cost is 100,000, implicit rate is 8% and present value factors are given. It is reasonably certain that the lessee will exercise the purchase option on December 31, 2025. Okay? So number 1, how much will be the gross investment? So gross investment will be equal, no? to the gross rentals but this time plus option tayo because kapag may purchase option na given hindi residual value yung ina option po okay so gross rentals will be equal to 500 times the lease term of 4 500,000 times the lease term of 4 which is equal to 2 million pesos then purchase option is how much? purchase option is 200,000 okay so gross investment now will be equal to 2.2 million. Ano ba? Requirement number 2 tayo. How much is the net investment? Once again, no? Pag sales type please, net investment will be equal to the present value of rentals and then present value kung magka, nung in mo sa taas, no? So, present value of option. So, for the rentals, that's 500,000 times the present value factor of ordinary annuity which is 3.312, 3.312. Then for the option, that's equal to 200,000 times the present value of 1, which is 0.735. So, magkano to guys? 500,000 times 3.312, this is actually equal to 1,656,000. Then 200,000 times 0.735, this is equal to 140. 7,000. Okay? Then, adding these two will give us what? Will give us the net investment which is equal to 1,656 plus 147 or this is equal to 1,803,000. Okay? So, final answer, requirement number 2, no? Is equal to 1,803. By the way, requirement number 1, final answer is 2.2 million. Okay? Requirement 3, magkano daw yung earned interest income? I-minus mo lang ulit yung net investment sa gross investment. Okay? So, number 3, unearned in the rest income will now be equal to 2.2 million minus 1,803 or this is equal to 397,000. So, requirement number 3, 397,000 will be our final answer. Okay? Number 4, magkano daw yung sales? Well, here in number 4, sales will be the net investment minus 
I mean, or fair value, whichever is lower. Wala pa rin fair value na given, no? So, sales will be equal to the net investment of 1803. Okay? So, final answer requirement number 4 is 1803. Okay? Number 4, magkano cost of goods sold? I mean, number 5. Cost of goods sold will be the cost of the asset plus the initial direct cost paid by the lessor. Okay? So, cost of the asset is how much? Cost of the machinery is 1 million pesos. While the initial direct cost paid by the lessor is equal to 100,000. Ang ibig sabihin dito, meron tayong cost of goods sold ngayon na 1.1 million. Okay? So, number 5, 1.1 million will be the final answer. And lastly, number 6, magkano gross profit? I-minus mo lang yung cost of goods sold sa sales, no? So, here in number 6, gross profit will be equal to 1,803 minus 1.1 million or this is equal to 703,000. So, final answer number 6 will be equal to 703,000. So, that is illustrative problem number 5. Okay? So, now, add lang ako ng isang page, no? One last concept before, right, we end this video. What if nagkaroon ng actual sale of the asset? Hindi na tinapos, no? Once again, hindi na tinapos yung list term. Binili ni Lessie yung asset, okay? So, if that's the case, dalawa ang i-compare natin. Anong i-compare natin, sir? We'll compare, no, the selling price and what? We'll compare the selling price and the carrying amount of the lease receivable, Okay? So, if the selling price is higher than the carrying amount of the lease receivable, ang ibig sabihin niyan, mas malaki yung nare-receive natin compared dun sa binibenta natin. So, dito, meron tayong gain. But if the carrying amount is higher, no, mas mura natin binibenta, meron naman tayong loss. At itong gain or loss na to, part po yan ng profit or loss. Okay? So, to illustrate this last concept, no, let's move on to the last problem which is Problem number 6. So, Pepper Company sold an equipment that it had been leasing under sales type lease for 3.5 million. The following balances are associated with the finance lease on the books of Pepper on the date of sale. Okay? So, lease receivable fees amount is 1, 5 million and earned interest income is 1.2. So, magkano yung carrying amount of lease receivable ngayon? This is equal to 3.8 million. Okay? So, kung 3.5 million natin binibenta, yung 3.8 million, meron ngayon tayo ditong loss, no? So, magkano yung loss? We have to recognize loss equal to 300,000. So, final answer, illustrative problem number 6 will be equal to 300,000. Okay? So, this is the end of accounting for leases on the point of view of the lessor. Thank you for watching. See you on our next video wherein we'll discuss the point of view of the lessee. Okay? Keep safe guys and God bless. Bye-bye.